So you want to be a rock star? I'm not saying it's going to be easy. Gnarly. Right into the freaking blender here. Oh, that was tough. Blown skis. And it sure won't be glamorous. I don't want to get out. But the journey is sweet, the views are breathtaking, and the sense of accomplishment, totally worth it. Hey guys, Kerry Werner here, and through this walkthrough series, I wanted to share with you some of my Rockstar Trail experience. Give you some tricks and tips that I learned along the way that will hopefully make your journey a bit smoother, take some anxiety out of kicking this thing off, and ultimately help you finish the ride. Picking up with day two here, that would be Braley's Pond to Douthat State Park. This is a good one. I was really looking forward to this day because finishing at Douthat State Park meant that I had a nice flat spot on the ground and a hot shower. I could not only wash myself, but also my chamois. And there's a camp store, so I was able to restock some supplies. Starting from Braley Pond, like I said in the last episode, if I were you, I would not even worry about breakfast. I wouldn't even have packed it. I would have just gone back to the Mountain View General Store and got a nice hot cup of coffee, a nice biscuit, and then I would have hit the road. So up towards Braley Pond and you will veer really right onto trail out. immediately and you'll go past the lake and then you'll pretty much start climbing right away. You'll go up Johnson's Draft, up Bald Ridge, and you'll go over the ridge and drop down Bridge Hollow, down into a parking area for the Ramsey's Draft Trail. At the bottom of that hollow, you will cross a big creek and that'll be your first water stop on the day. It's a hike bike, it's a pretty big river. And then you'll start climbing right from there, up Road Hollow Trail. Road Hollow Trail climbs all the way up to the crest of the Shenandoah Mountain Trail. If you turn right, you'll go to the Confederate Breastwork and you turn left and then you'll be it's on the Shenandoah Mountain River. Trail. So you'll take that out to 250. So that whole first section of trail there from Braley Pond up to the Shenandoah Mountain Trail, basically to 250 is about 12 miles. So then from there you cross 250 and you have a gravel road climb up Shenandoah Mountain Road and then you get on the Shenandoah Mountain Trail again. You've got about 25 miles of proper ridgeline single track here. So if you think back to that creek crossing at the bottom of Road Hollow Trail at the Ramsey's draft trail parking. That's kind of your last water for 30 miles because you climb up from there and then you're on ridgeline for 25. So once you traverse the Shenandoah Mountain Trail, which is super cool, super narrow bench cut, really, really good stuff in there. Awesome views of the valleys off to the north and the south. You'll finish that and you'll drop down into the Fort Lewis Valley. And there you will also have water that you can filter as well. But you've got a solid 30 miles of no water. Keep in mind from the Mountain View General Store, from Braley Pond essentially, there is also no food until you get to Douthat. So you gotta pack in like, you know, a whole day's worth of food in your pack. Once you drop into the Fort Lewis Valley, you get a nice 10 miles of pavement. Then you cross over State Route 39 and then you immediately get spit back into single track on Little Mountain Mare Trail, which was a doozy. This was my cracking point for day two. Day one was White Oak Trail. Day two was Little Mountain Mare Trail. I should back up here, give you some context. I started on Sunday. On Saturday was the Grand Depart. I started on... S I started on Saturday. I started... shouldn't have done this at rush hour. I started on Sunday. On Saturday was the Grand Depart. That's right, there is a race for this thing. I think the winning time is one day, 18 hours and 52 minutes or something like that. So, yeah. <laughs> the context there is for the Grand Depart, they, the trail crews in the local areas had done some trail work and they leaf blew Little Mountain Mare, which was awesome. But at the same time, I was climbing up some super slow moving loamy stuff, which I reckon would have been even worse had they not leaf blown it. I was just in a bad place. It's like a 15 mile grunt from there up to the Ingalls Field Airport. As you work your way up, you go past Warm Springs Mountain. And then I had the pleasure of riding through a controlled burn area, which was pretty cool. The fire crew was out there, you know, burning the forest down. <laughs> 
Once you pop out at the airport, you get a sweet view of the Hot Springs Valley there. And then, you know, you can also look south and get an awesome view of Douthat Valley. You get on pavement for a hot minute and then you pop off pavement, climb up as a little, it's like a little bonus climb to a control tower. It's just gravel road. And I, I reckon that's the high point for the day. And then you drop back down to the same exact pavement road. So it's a little bit of a bummer, especially late in the day for me. I was not stoked on that. Man, the single track descent from there is awesome. Sandy Gap Trail drops straight down. It's about six miles, no pedaling. All really cool, old CC hand-built retaining walls. Just really cool bench cut. And that takes you right down to the gravel road, Smith Creek Road. I am I am now in familiar territory. I've done some Strava stage race stuff and also just ridden in Douthat a bunch. So from Smith Creek Road, we have a straight up to the top of the Middle Mountain Ridge on Sandy Gap Trail. It's a grunt. Definitely a little bit of hiking in there, especially with the loaded rig. But man, once you get up to Middle Mountain, you are home free. You get to pedal across the ridge and you can look out on either side. It's a super narrow ridge line with a great single track. Drop in, salt some, and then you just you pop out right into Beaver Dam Campground right in Dalton. I got a camp spot in White Oak, which is just down the main park road. If you book yours in White Oak, you'll also go right past the camp store, which I was too late and I missed it. They close at six or 6.30. I didn't get to buy any extra snacks for that night. I will go there the next day. So yeah, that was day, that was day two. Really big day. That was another 68 miles, eight and a half hours with 12,000 feet of climbing. And aside from that 10 mile road stretch through the Fort Lewis Valley, it was all single track and it was all Tough. Big things to keep in mind here are paying attention to water and food. Like I said earlier, your only food is right at the start. If you go to Mountain View General Store, you gotta make it to the camp store before it closes in Douthat. This is also important because the next day, on day three, when you start in Douthat, you have 30 miles of backcountry before you get into Covington, your next bit of civilization. So you're definitely wanna, gonna wanna stock up in, in Douthat at the camp store. Water-wise, you have that creek at the bottom of the Road Hollow Trail. Then you have no water all across the whole Shenandoah Mountain Trail. Then you get some water in the Fort Lewis Valley. There is a church right before you cross 39. But then once you start on Little Mountain Mare, there's no more water. And that takes you up onto more ridgeline. There's basically those two water spots and, and that's all you're working with on the day. So you really gotta be conservative, make sure you fill up at those two spots. And of course you drop into the campground and then you don't have to filter, filter water, which is really cool. So that's it. Next episode, we will pick up with day three, which would be Douthat State Park to Roaring Run day use area.